Did I go to big ship? Hi gang! Happy Aloha Friday! Oh, can we go back to the other one? The ship is going on. There you go. There you go. There's the ship going out. Ah, it looks much better. I like. That looks awesome. Listening to this music and watching the boat go out. That's awesome. Hi, hi, you guys. Hi, everybody. Mahalo for being here on the channel. Happy Aloha Friday. Show coming up in just a little bit. Hi hey gang, happy Aloha Friday, almost there, almost showtime, kind of a uh, interesting show for you today, so stick around, that's coming up in just a little, oh, timer's that side, timer's over there, there we go, <laughs> hi you guys, happy Friday, woohoo! Wow, there's another boat going out. Wow, a lot of them going out today. By the way, that's Kiwalos. Hi, everybody over in the room. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Raynette. Carly. Carl. Hi, you guys. Thank you for being on. Almost there. Minute, almost a minute to go. Wow, nice waves on the south-facing shorelines. Not bad. Hawaii. 
we identify as vaccinated. You should too. Friday, everybody. Billy V here. Here, but not really. I'll, I'll explain that to you in a moment. First of all, no matter where you are, thank you so much for being with us. Happy Aloha Friday to you. Thank you very much for watching Billy V Live. We are here at 3 o'clock in the afternoons. Aloha Fridays, Hawaiian Standard Time. We'll take you on a live look outside. Coming up on the show today, uh, let's see, we have Amy Hanayali is going to stop by, Black Bow, Brittany Paiva, Jasmine Crow. We'll talk about them. We'll talk with them. There is a motion picture that has to do with uh, Jason Momoa. And so that is coming and they're starting to do casting. So uh, it's going to be one of those things you're going to want to start to get ma to the fact that you're going to want to have to fill out some paperwork and get ready for it because it's coming and you're going to want to be a part of it. Uh, and also JP from The Green is going to stop by too because they're going to be on TV coming up on Sunday night. All this happening and more. Plus, I'm not really here. Uh, yeah, so I am actually in on a plane right now headed to California. So this has been pre-taped. Uh, I, I don't want to try to fool you and tell you it's live but not but we've got a great show for you today uh kind of different because we don't have the live aspect but n nevertheless uh we are here and appreciate you being here and as always um subscribe if you can over on the youtube side or you know uh share Okay, it wasn't supposed to trigger that fast, but that's okay. We're here. <laughs> it's it's well, it's live. It's not live, but it is. Uh, we'll, we'll just put it that way. Okay, so outside right now, North Shore. Uh, you can see by the way the winds are, uh, the waves are. You know when they start to curl like that, um, and you get small kind of wave action. You see that mist that's blowing off the wave that tells you there there's winds. There are, it's really windy conditions, so kind of sloppy out there, but there's still some people and they're still trying to catch some waves. So, you know, hey, a lot of people though, deciding to stay up on the beach and just make a nice early evening of it here on an Aloha Friday. Uh, let's go ahead and go from here. This is, uh, let's go down Waikiki side and show you what things are like right now. That's Waikiki for you, much different picture, um, less wind. Because that wind's coming uh, from the north, kind of, uh, the northeast. And so what happens is that um, by the time it gets down to Waikiki, there's not a whole lot of wind. See how those waves are breaking nicely? So nice conditions down in Waikiki in the town spots. Uh, blown out on the east-facing shores, but still a beautiful day. We just had a front that came through, brought a little bit of rain. Little bit, small kind. We were hoping for more, believe me. We were hoping for a bunch more. All right, so let's go ahead and get you uh, into the studios. We're going to talk story with part of Headline News, uh, a director that is here, and let's get you casted for uh, to be in, in, in a movie. All right, got a bunch of headlines here we, real quick before we get into some wonderful interviews. Uh, first of all, Aloha for Tonga is being rebroadcast and it's going to be coming up 9 p.m. Uh, yeah, 9 p.m. That's tonight on KGMB. So if you are here in the state of Hawaii, you can be able to see it there. And if you missed it and you're outside of the state of Hawaii, that's okay. Just go to alohafortonga.com. That's where you can still make donations. Uh, and then you can also find a go to YouTube on YouTube. Uh, go search Aloha for Tonga and you can see the full broadcast there. It's not only the one hour, uh, but on both sides, it's the uh, 
pre-broadcast and the post-broadcast. Pre-broadcast, 30 minutes, and post-broadcast is about an hour more of just great entertainment, uh, information. And so uh, go ahead and check it out, alohafratonga.com. Go over there, watch the replay, or watch it on KGMB. Other news for you, Silk Sonic uh, is, uh, let me see, they won two iHeart Music Awards this past week. Congratulations to them. Bruno Mars, of course, used to be Elvis in Hawaii when he was young. And then Anderson Pack, who opened for Bruno Mars while they were on the 24 Karat Magic Tour. And now look at them. They're just blowing it up all over the place. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to Hawaii's own Bruno Mars. Well, a couple of hair, uh, happy birthdays. First of all, uh, George Helm would have celebrated his birthday this past week. Kelly Boy DeLima did celebrate his birthday this past week. Happy birthday to both and hello to their families. Kailua Moon has a live stream coming up and it's going to be coming up at 5.30 this afternoon after our show. Before, they used to be like right afterwards. We'd start at 3 and they'd start at 4, which is really cool. But they're at 5.30 now, so just kind of a heads up. Um, we told you about Aloha for Tonga going to be on television on KGMB. Just a reminder, May Day. Uh, I'll be emceeing May Day again this year. But it's not only virtual as far as the TV that is on the show that's on television, but it's got a live component to it, too. We've got more information as we lead up to May Day, and we'll have it for you on, you know, we'll put also the information down below. We'll have that for you. And look out for May Day. Hawaiian Airlines May Day 2022, brought to you by the Hawaiian Islands and many fine sponsors pulled that out of memory um there is a, a casting call that has gone out an extensive one and i says wow on this one i gotta talk to the executive producer so uh i got a chance to so here's the details watch on this Aloha Friday, we're getting to talk to executive producer Thomas Pa Sibben. He's got a project coming up and an open casting call, and it's no experience required. Thomas, do I have all of that correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a nutshell, that's what it is. You know, we're trying to trying to get something that is um, uh, open for everybody. You know, we were really looking for a uh, Hawaiian Polynesian look. Uh, we're going old school with it, you know, and... Uh, there's no better place to do it than Hawaii. So we just we want to give everybody a chance. That's really what we're trying to do. Okay, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of that casting call coming up in a couple of moments. Talk about you as a filmmaker, because, brother, you've been doing projects that really speak to what comes from the islands, how we think as a people, how we feel and what we do, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was the goal, right? It, it For me, it, it started a long time ago. I used to work at Kualoa Ranch, um, and uh, I remember hearing about... Uh, the Dwayne Johnson movie, right? They were going to do Kamehameha. And it clicked in my head. I was just like, wow, if they want Hawaiian stories, I can do that. You know, that's something that I can do. So I really started focusing to uh, bring those types of stories out. And that's that's really where it started for me. You've got other projects that are right now that you're doing, but this one, uh, as I understand it, takes precedence. What is this story about that you can tell us at this point? It's really the story based on Ka'iana. Uh, Ka'iana was a chief who got on a ship, traveled around the world, was able to kind of get an idea of what the outside world was and what they were bringing and giving him an idea on, you know, what was at stake for Hawaii. This was during a time where the kingdoms were separated and uh, they, they were not united at the time. And so he started seeing for himself the necessity of unification. And uh, we just, just thought it was a beautiful story. By the time this world traveler comes home, he, he has this idea of, you know, what he can do, how he can contribute to bring the islands together. And okay. so it's it's a story following a, that character. Okay. So what are you looking for as far as a casting call? Uh, give me the nuts and bolts on this one. Yeah. Well, look, um, obviously it's, it's a period piece, right? And it's a period piece in Hawaii. So, you know, with a project like this, this has never been done before, right? So... I, the mantra that I've been giving to the production is this type of show has never been done before. So we have to do something that has not been done before. So for a big production like this, I wanted to make sure the casting department was clear that we were going to go out to um, non-acting people, give people a chance. Um, you know, we, we come from a people that is not really represented in our own stories. And so we just, 
it was just a goal of ours. Jason, uh, Jason Momoa and I really wanted to bring a show that could give people access to the industry that has been inaccessible to us in the past. So we are looking for, you know, um, warriors. We're looking for strong women. Um, we're looking for people that can represent that time period. And uh, we have it. I know we do. Like Hawaii's got it. And so we're just we're just putting it out there. Like no more shame. If you've ever wanted to be a part of something like this, you know, uh, reach, check the flyer, reach out, uh, follow the instructions that are on there. And, you know, just be seen, just be seen. It's out there and people know it's there. Um, I'm, I'm really calling on the, the halals. I really want to see a turnout from the halals. Um, but I'll take, look, we even gonna need a lot of extras. The, so what we're putting out there now are actual speaking roles. Like these are very specific characters in our history. Um, but we are casting um, non-actors if, if, you know, if possible, but um they're speaking roles these are not just the you know in the back like waving or somebody getting stabbed or something like that like we we really want to put it out there and give everybody a chance but we will have plenty of extra work you know so i'm looking for you know uh hawaiian polynesian um you know that look uh we need but we're gonna need uh extras too so call your you know your uncle who works construction you know call your your auntie that works at uh, Kamehameha Schools or Manuhe Ali'i, like just whatever it is, like just spread the word out there and just, you know, just show up. Like that's really, we're, we're trying to, we're, we're trying to make an impact on the industry, right? It, it's it's a time for that. Like we talk about diversified storytelling and there's always been this Hollywood Hawaiian romance, mm. but it's never really come full circle. It's never really done what it, the potential of it is. And it's because we haven't done it ourselves. We haven't gotten in there and and really inserted ourselves in the conversation. So that's what we're doing with this project. We're really just trying to like, instead of waiting for Hollywood to come to us and asking for the handout, can I be in the back? Can I, you know, crack coconut or something like that? It's like, we're really bringing Hawaii to Hollywood and saying that this is our stories. This is how we see ourselves. And this is the way we want to do it. And we were very lucky to to get the opportunity to actually do it. You know, so that's that's what we're looking for. Our moderators right now are putting the information down there in the comments. So you can go ahead and just go down and click on them. And we're also putting that on our website at hawaiinnewsnow.com. So you'll be very easy for you to find it. And we want to make sure that you're finding it from a credible source. And, and so when you get that, as Thomas says, make sure that you're following the directions. We'll have more information for you. Brother, thank you so much. And brah, go get them. Yeah, thank you so much. Just... Just, I, I appreciate you getting the word out. Just show up, guys. You know, I know we can do this. And so that's why we're doing it. We want to provide an opportunity for, for people that never really had the chance before. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the family of Jerome Gray from California. Yay! What's up, everybody? Mata's on the bottom. Ah, Cisa just popped right back in. And then right above me is Tini. Hi, gang. Hey. Aloha. 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 Are you nice? nice to Hi, have everybody. you on. Let's go one at a time. And, and Tini, I'm going to start with you since you're, you're right above me. And then we'll go Sisa and then Mata after that. What does this weekend mean to you as we celebrate your dad having a, a wonderful celebration? Star-studded Polynesian cultural <laughs> celebration coming up this weekend. Gosh, you know what? 75 years. That's what it means to us. He's been around for that long. We're celebrating his birthday. We're honoring him at this uh, first ever We Are Samoa Gala. And we are really excited because, you know, this is something that we're not just honoring him, but we're honoring many pioneers as well who have uh, blazed the trails for uh, many Samoans in the entertainment industry, uh, whether it's acting, music, uh, dancing, uh, culinary arts, uh, many more, you know, this is just one of many. And uh, we are very honored that uh, my dad will be the first honoree. Uh, the We Are Samoa Gala is nothing, it's something like nothing that's been done before. This is a gala uh, Samoan style. And uh, this is a red carpet event. We're expecting everybody to come out dressed in their best. Uh, it's a black tie event. Uh, it's a red carpet event. It's going to be held in Costa Mesa. And I mean, we are going all out to celebrate uh, the old man's big day because we're honoring not just his life, but also his career in the entertainment industry. Cesar, what does this mean to you? 
Oh, it means so much, Billy. My gosh, this man has done so much for his country. And just to see him, um, just for us kids to honor dad properly, especially after losing our mom, you know, we celebrated her after she left. And we just didn't want to do that with dad. We wanted to just take this moment now and celebrate him the best way we could. And we had to go big or go home. Mata, what does this mean for you to see, for the younger generation to see your dad celebrated in a way like this? It gives it hope for the younger generation to know that what they're doing isn't going to go in vain, that there is still hope to really follow your dreams, and which our father did. And with that, his legacy lives with us. And knowing that we decided to follow our dreams as well, just like our father and now this is where we're at, following his footsteps and being entertainers and artists as well, still living our dream um, and providing for our families the way he did. So that's what it is. It means hope. It's not only the talents of, of a great man, but it's also the giving back to community. Talk about that for a couple of moments. Yeah, well, um, you know, this is something that we're doing for the community. 100% of these proceeds of the profits go to a nonprofit that we're working with called N Pine. And uh, they are 501c3 here in Southern California. And they have several chapters throughout the US. And uh, they focus mainly on high school students who are trying to get to college. So they provide resources, they provide scholarships. Um, and then, you know, also uh, they provide uh, uh, people that they can uh, follow as role models who can help guide them along the way, counselors, mentors. Mentors, that's the word I was looking for. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, three initiatives that we're, we're raising funds for. It's not just for college scholarships, but this is going to be the first of the Jerome Gray Artist Scholarship. So, uh, you know, Dad has, um, you know, in the 70s and 80s, was he left Samoa to follow his dream, his passion. You know, and that's kind of without knowing what to do. He just kind of followed the stars, followed his heart, and that just led him to where he's at right now. But he would like to, you know, give the shortcut, which is not to uh, eliminate hard work and all that. But he wants you to we want to provide a scholarship and all these resources that help children to follow their dreams in the entertainment industry. And then finally, third is to raise funds uh, to to help educate our community and the uh, and the dangers of diabetes and, and the sugar and and, and, and eating healthy uh, to help live longer to for their families, you know, and, and that's how we lost our mom, like Cesar said. And so these, these three initiatives are, uh, mean a lot to the family. Cesar, talk about a couple of moments. Uh, it's a red carpet affair. What, what kind of names, what kind of people are coming to this event? Talk about that. Well, we're excited to have some of our close friends and family who are out there. Um, they're going to be joining us, but as well as people out here in our community, you know, each one of us in our own four ways, us four siblings, we walk in our own lane. So it's the first time we are all coming together to bring together our worlds. So we have, uh, you know, Troy Polamalu and his family coming out. They've blessed us and supported us. Tua Tango and his family have blessed us as well. And they're not going to be able to come, but they've been there. They're bringing people to support us. As well as, you know, one of my um, favorite uncles in the world, Aldrich Porter, a director here in Hollywood. And he's coming with his entire family, all our cousins. Uh, we have one of our friends, the Reno Anawais, the wrestlers, uh, coming out with his beautiful wife, Tiffany Smith Anawai. She's a CBS producer, uh, CBS president of diversity here in uh, the studios up here. So those are just a few names, as well as other artists of different walks in our community that are coming out we consider them our vip and our a-listers so we're so stoked and there's also a wonderful entertainment a, kind of a timeline in following the footsteps of your dad as he's come through the journey from past till now correct correct Absolutely. everything is based uh this whole gala is just going to go off of that story and the legacy he's left and the timeline of how he did it leaving samoa following his dream, going to Hawaii and making a living in his family there and from Hawaii to the States, to the mainland. But, um, and we were, you know, through all the siblings getting together and trying to figure out what's the best way to tell dad's story was through sang song and art. Uh, we decided to have certain handpicked artists that have been gracious enough to be a part of this event, like Paula Funga. Um, we're going to bring her down from, Ho um, from Hawaii. Uh, Reno, uh, amazing artist Gary King, um, and too bad Fiji and Lucky Mariner couldn't make it. But 
Uh, there's many other artists that are going to tell their story and give great interpretations and renditions of dad's songs, uh, explaining kind of the, the timeline of how he did what he did uh, as an artist, not knowing what he was doing. He had no idea that what he would do 60 years later would be something so prolific uh, and monumental to give hope for all of us. So that's what it is, and we're excited for it. All right, and it's especially special since you know you are continuing that legacy. You all are through music because you're all so musical. But uh, Mata, I'm specifically you since you are right now. You're at your recording studios. You're actually working too in yes, between, I right? Am. I am working. We are currently working on our uh, dual album for the Common Kings. We're looking to drop it within the next couple of months. And uh, yeah, the dad, we're, the four boys, we've been together from day one, um, and. They're all just like sons of Jerome Gray as well. They they think of dad, my dad as their dad. And, you know, my dad thinks of the boys as their son. So, and we've been just been so honored to see dad, you know, kind of helping and, and passing down all that he's learned throughout the years through touring, music, artists, production, writing. Um, and, you know, it's still certain parts of um, the world that I travel. I'm not known as the Common Kings guitarist. I'm still known as, hey, that's Jerome Gray's son. And it, he's known know, as the kazoo player of Common Kings. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the kazoo player of the Common Kings. You know, there's just that guy. Still gets 5%. That's all that matters. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, we are so happy for you and your ability to celebrate a uh, wonderful musical, cultural history through your family and sharing that with the world. And we appreciate you. And I can't wait to see you coming up here uh, in just a little bit in California. Thank you Billy, so much. you know what I'm really excited about, by the yes. way? That you are going to be our MC. Yes, <laughs> that's. I'm really stoked about that. We're bringing the way to California, yeah. and Billy is going to bring yeah. the fire. Well, I, uh, Rick Dees wasn't that, available. You know, um, as Ryan Seacrest wasn't available. Who and thank goodness, available? Ryan. Thank you very much for for stepping yeah. aside. I appreciate that. You know, yeah. maybe next time. For being you know? the tenth person in line, Billy. We really appreciate it. it was we'll honor. take it. We'll you take it. it. We'll take it. You and, it. And you know what? Um, I what I really enjoy was the fact that I was able to play that music, your dad's music, back yes. in the 1990s, uh, not Absolutely. only on KCC and AM, but on, we, on a brand new station at that time, KCC and FM 100. So. Wow. Hey, Billy, that's what we appreciate you so much. Yep. You know, when Tini brought up made, your name, that's we what were made it all special. Yep. That's a must. That's a must, Billy. Yep. Thank you. Love to you guys, and I cannot to wait guys. to see you in person soon. But yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Once again, go get them this weekend. Big weekend for your family. Yay! We are oh, Samoa Gala. We'll see you guys. Mahalo. Thank you, guys. All right, Mahalo to the family for being on the show with us. Um, and uh, I'm actually on the, already on the way to California. Did I mention the the Kailua Moon is doing? Uh, I think I did mention it that uh, they're doing live stream. Uh, coming up this afternoon. Actually, I have just seen something online that uh, actually they are taking a little bit of a break. So that means that they will be on Sunday. Sunday, is that what I saw? Uh, see you Sunday, Chart House, Facebook Live, 10 a.m. on Sunday. Okay, so Kailua Moon, that's when you can catch them next. Um, so two girls, Brittany Paiva, Jasmine Crow, born on Hawaii Island, grew up in Hawaii Island, they kind of knew each other. They're both into music. Uh, but now they are a duo doing music together. I asked them how it all started. So um, okay. I've always loved and admired and respected Britney as a recording artist and as an instrumentalist. And um, being a pop singer, songwriter, living in Los Angeles after I moved from the Big Island, I wanted to collaborate with her on a, a track. And so I wrote this song called Love is Love last year and thought, oh my gosh, I need to get Brittany on this song. I need to get her ukulele on there. Um, so we collaborated on the track and she flew out to do the music video with me. And then she was a featured artist on the song when it was released. But when she went back home, she said, I'd love to write a song with you. And I was like, okay, great. I'm always down to write. <laughs> so once we started um, writing the first song, we just kept going and kept writing. And then by the third song, we were like, you know what, maybe we should be a duo. Like this, this is like a different sound. This is a different project. And um, 
because there was a lyric in my song that says all the colors of your heart, like love is a rainbow. I was like, today my, my heart is black. And she's like, like a black rainbow, black bow. That should be our producer name. <laughs> so black bow was born. <laughs> Same story? <laughs> yeah, same story. It was really funny because like maybe a year prior to that, I was working on some production stuff just for fun. And I thought I need a, you know, like a moniker to use like some random producer name. And then a year later, we have Black Bow. So, yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far. Awesome. Um, let's go back to when you guys were growing up Big Island. OK, so Jazz, what kind of a person was Brittany? Um, she was kind of quiet, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> she kind of shy, but you know, you can feel so much emotion from like her music. It just comes through her heart and her, her hands. And, um, you can feel what she's feeling on stage when she plays. Awesome. So. Okay. Britt, same thing. Okay. What was Josh like growing up? <laughs> the same kind of quiet. <laughs> Okay, guilty. <laughs> yeah, so we would always run into each other, you know, at the grocery store, like at KTA or whatever. And, um, you know, we would say hi, but we never had a chance to really just, you know, sit down and talk stories and collaborate, you know. So, uh, yeah, it was just like a, usually a quick hi and bye. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so um, tell me about the kind of music that you guys are making together. So we we're kind of it's honestly really hard to put our music into one particular genre, um, but if we had to label it, it would be alternative pop. And yeah. the really fun thing about the music that we're making is um, so during you know the seven year hiatus that I had from performing ukulele uh, from 2013 until yeah about early 2019. Um, I spent a lot of time learning production and just watching videos on YouTube and basically trial and error. So I had all of these ideas in my head, but I couldn't get it out because, you know, that's not an area of music that uh, I had really ever ventured into. So when Jazz and I started collaborating, everything that I learned from that point, that's like, it came out. And so it's not only combining my skills on the ukulele, which I do incorporate into the music that we write. Um, it's going into pop, into jazz, into um, EDM, into rock. So there's all these different elements basically compiling all of my inspirations from the course of my music career. And it's just fusing into this one sound. And then with jazz and her experience and skills and, you know, vocals and violin and her production skills as well. It's just like, it's, yeah, it's been great. And I'm really, really happy with the music that we're writing. Okay. So we know that Brittany plays ukulele. So jazz talk a little bit about what you do, what you specialize in. Okay. Well, I specialize at, I'm a singer songwriter, violinist. I, I do production with Logic and Pro Tools. Um, I play piano. I play guitar. I play ukulele as well. Not not like Brittany, but <laughs> um, so she's also a multi-instrumentalist and I'm a multi-instrumentalist and I'm a producer and she's a producer. And um, yeah, we, we just kind of really fit well together because we kind of have the same mentality, um, especially being from the same place, like being born and raised. And we were both so musical. So um, for me, I, I do the lyrics, I do the vocal melodies and top lines and stuff like that. So we kind of came up with a rhythm when we write together, which is I'll send her a poem, like I'll send her some lyrics that I wrote. It has no music to it, but she'll like take that and feel what it would feel like with a chord progression behind it. And then I'll start singing over that and then riffing off her melodies and being like, I hear this melody here. And then she hears this melody there. And then, um, in every one of our songs together, we have a, a solo where she's featured as a soloist in the middle of the song. And then I'll do like a violin um, counterpoint to that with her alongside. So that's kind of like the Black Bow stamp with every one of our songs. So this really sounds like true collaboration. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, talk, about, <laughs> talk about pyramids for a little bit. So pyramids, um, was this the... 
was it this was the fifth song that we wrote right yeah it was the fifth one okay we, yeah we already so, got on a roll yeah so we we composed like 13 songs within a few months and uh pyramids was number five and so after the love is love shoot uh i sent her this um prism you know in the shape of a pyramid and it's basically meant to you know bring creative energy to your creative space so that was kind of like the the core of writing pyramids and basically talking about how we create as a duo and all of our goals and all those things so um jazz was actually on her way to her mom's in new mexico and that morning i sent her a beat and she's like i don't want to listen to it because i'm i'm ready to hop on the plane and then it's just going to be horrible because i can't record anything and i was like oh, well too bad i sent it so i sent it to her she opened it and then so the flights to new mexico she was writing lyrics and um yeah it kind of started from there <laughs> That morning, I was like, I'm not opening this beat because I'm going to immediately hear a melody. And sure enough, as soon as I heard like the first measure, I was like, we're building the pyramids. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's over. I got to sit down and like get this now before I jump on this plane. <laughs> so the hook was like written within like five minutes. And then um, from like a remote setup in New Mexico, in my mom's guest bedroom, and a little like microphone and her violin i did the final take um on violin that you hear in the on the on the record and um Brittany and i were like on zoom just like finishing it um for me it was like late at night but it was earlier in hawaii but <laughs> so long distance long distance doesn't um affect our our songwriting collaboration at all Wow, that's awesome. Uh, I do have to ask you, Brittany, uh, we know you as an instrumentalist mainly. How much are you stepping into the vocal, uh, being a vocalist spectrum? Absolutely none. <laughs> no? Okay. okay. No. <laughs> Honestly, um, I do have opera training, opera vocal training, but I hate singing. So I will not sing. I sang at the bar maybe twice in the past. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, I sang. <laughs> that's, that's after I a few, once. right? That's after a little bit of liquid <laughs> help. I sang once and I rapped Slim Shady. That was the only two times I ever sang in public. <laughs> but I don't drink anymore, so uh, I singing's not my thing. Okay. I that to jazz. <laughs> okay. And, well, and jazz, you I know, know what? you. Next... Go ahead. <laughs> uh, our next Black Bow song, I'm gonna get you to sing something. Just saying. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe it'll be background well, vocals, but it'll be something. So, okay. Looking forward to that. Maybe. Well, we'll see. We'll see. You never know. Okay. I, I, you gave us a little bit of a, a sample there, Jazz, for both somebody that hasn't heard before. Uh, could you sing just a couple of lines of anything, just, just to kind of hear your voice? Okay. Um. Sometimes love is great cannot be explained love is everything it's like the sunshine through the rain and people love to label things find some sense of what it means only seeing black and white this love was made to celebrate in life that was from love is love <laughs> wow. kissing every inch of your skin with my lips and my fingertips Taking all of my sweet time, taking all of you in Staring you all up and down, like I may never see you again All right, mahalo to the ladies for being on. Uh, let's see, that's Jasmine Crow, of course, and uh, Brittany Paiva, and we will put their information down in the comments. They're already doing that right now. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on this weekend. As we mentioned, Aloha for Tonga is coming up. That's tonight on KGMB, so catch it there. Coming up Sunday night, there is going to be a TV special, as a matter of fact, Let's find out more about that right now, and it has to do with the green. Coming up on Sunday night, K5 Television, you're going to be able to watch the green, but it's a special edition of the green. You're going to be able to see them in Conjure. JP joins us. JP, how are you, bro? How's it? Hello, Billy. How's everything? 
Good. Tell me about how the group has been. I know that, you know, what you're about to see tonight was kind of more in the kind of in the beginning of COVID, correct? Yeah. So, you know, COVID was really interesting for, you know, everyone. And for us, we were, you know, not able to go on the road or play shows. And we were a few guys are live off island, you know, so we were separated and it was tough. But we had a project we were working on. And that project continued to thrive. And I think just the challenges that COVID brought put a lot of pressure and a lot of, you know, doubt in our minds. And we weren't sure what was going to happen. And the result was just to work harder, I guess, and continue to write and produce. And the album finished and was very happy and proud of it. And it's kind of a trip looking back that, it went down that way, but, you know, we've been working hard at this craft for a while, and we're very proud of, of where we are with it. The album has done great, but this, coming up tonight, this is kind of special. You guys are on the rooftop of Waikiki. You're distant from your fans. Kind of describe that sequence of events. So we were we were struggling to figure out what was the play, what were we going to do with, with our business and, and with our music, and trying to figure out how we can do a show. And we came on this opportunity with International Marketplace and Lalo to basically set up a stage and sell rooms at Lalo and allow people to come and experience a concert while abiding by the social distancing and all of that that came with, you know, the pandemic and, and, it, and it happened and it was unreal. It was just like a crazy, different, beautiful vibe we haven't played a show in how long and people haven't been to shows. So it was just, you know, a, an idea that sparked into something that was really special. We filmed it and we're just very blessed to be able to share it. It's our, it's the brand new eyes experience. It's a live show of, with a lot of our new songs. And, you know, it's just looking back on it. It's just kind of crazy that it's, it's, it's amazing. Okay, so make sure that you are watching on K5 television and our moderators are putting the information down in the uh, down in the comments area so you can go ahead and find more information real easy online. Um, what is next? Uh, what is up and coming? Because I noticed you guys had some residency at Blue Note. You guys have been going out and venturing to Cali, Vegas. Is that going to continue? Yeah, so, you know, we went, we just finished our brand new Eyes Experience Tour um, this past February and it was it was just a trip to be out there again and you know things are starting to pick up and um, we have a summer tour lining up nothing locked in yet but a lot of things coming in and the album is you know we're so proud of it and being able to share these new tunes and do what we what we love to do and it's, this is our fifth full-length album it's just been such a crazy journey you know music isn't the easiest thing to be successful in you know and, and to be able to have a fifth album it's just a huge blessing, and um, we're just very proud to be in the position we are, and we, we're taking it very seriously and working harder than ever, I believe. All right. Once again, making music for the masses, finding different ways to deliver it, and making the fans happy. That's what it's all about. JP from the Green. Make sure that Thank you're you watching on K5 sure. Television, 7 p.m. Sunday night. Mahalo to JP for being with us on the show. That's going to do it for me. Um, once again, this is a pre-recorded show today only because I'm in travel, a transition, uh, heading towards California, and then I'll be back uh, coming up on Monday. Um, but that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for all the comments. Thank you to the moderators for taking over uh, and, 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 and doing uh, live while the show was running in its pre-recorded sense. Um, coming up next week, though, uh, oh, Amy Hanaya Lee was supposed to be with us today, but there's a sound problem. We're not able to get that on, but she will be with me on Hawaii News Now Sunrise Monday morning because she's got Monday night gig, Tuesday night gig at um, here at Manoa Valley Theater. We'll talk more about that on the Hawaii News Now side. Coming up next week, uh, oh, we're going to feature a music video from John Cruz, but John Cruz will be on the show next week. And... We have one other person here. Um, also, um, Chef Jojo from the island of Maui is going to join us on the show. Uh, and we're going to talk food for a little bit. And let me see here. 
And I think that's, I think I covered it just for now. Um, so we'll let you know during the week who's going to be coming up on the show. It's been a hectic week. Hey, Mala Mopono, Aloha Ahui Ho. Once again, we're on here 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Aloha Fridays. And then I will see you next week. We'll have more information because there's so many things that are now coming up and going on. It's going to be a crazy summer. Leave you with the music of John Cruz. It's time. Oh, it's uh, la, 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 la. it's his latest single that he has out. Uh, time to build a bridge. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the music video and keep the comments coming during the music video. Thanks. It's time to build a bridge. I've heard some instigation Spun by different situations Lead to altered information It's time to build a bridge To our posterity Spiritual prosperity It's time to build a bridge It's time to build a bridge To our humanity Not based on our insanity Reacting to calamity It's time to build a bridge A new way of meeting you Helping when there's things to do It's time to build a bridge Here we are Different kinds of equal We're here to build a bridge We the people We will be acting of our own free will Across the chasm slanting down that And the difference between us is not that wide. It's time to build a bridge. I've heard some instigations from my different situations lead to altered information. It's time to build a bridge. A new Breathe.